My single most motivating dynamic is the one that can best be characterised as I'm going to fucking well show you. I began dating younger men by accident. About 11 or so years ago now, when I was running BBH, we were asked to pitch for an online dating brand. In advertising, when you pitch for a client's business, you have to experience the client's product and the entire competitive landscape. The rest of my team, they all went online as fake personas. I was single. I thought, <laughs> I have to do this for business reasons. I might as well do it for real. I got an avalanche of responses from 18-year-olds, 19-year-olds, all the way through the 20s. And for dating younger men, I came across an issue which is what happens when you combine total freedom of access to hardcore porn online with our society's equally total reluctance to talk openly and honestly about sex. It's a convergence of those two things that has resulted in porn becoming by default the sex education of today in not a good way. Seven months ago, um, my team and I launched MakeLoveNotPorn.tv which is a crowdsourced platform where anybody from anywhere in the world can submit videos of themselves having real-world sex. In all its funny, beautiful human silliness, Make Love Not Porn is not anti-porn. I'm tackling the complete absence in our society of an open, healthy, truthful conversation around sex in the real world. When you take the shame and embarrassment out of sex, you defuse many things that have the potential to make human lives very, very unhappy. But looking back on my own past, um, you know, the, the things that impacted on, on my personal sexual development were an excessive emphasis from my mother on virginity, mm -hmm. you know, which resulted in me doing a huge amount of everything but mm -hmm. in my late teens. And, and just, um, you know, a realization eventually of how enormously enjoyable and pleasurable sex was. And bloody hell, what was I holding out for all those years? The best moment in my life was when I realised that I no longer give a damn what anybody thinks. Mm -hmm. My wardrobe operates rather differently these days, but very much the same principles. When you have a really big presentation to do, or a really important piece of business to pitch, you have the outfits that you wear that you go, okay, this is my lucky outfit. One of my summer lucky outfits was um, a pair of python skin pants by Tom Ford for Gucci. Whenever I wore them, um, I knew that um, what would happen would be the same every time. So I would walk into the conference room and the client would say, wow, great pants. And I'd mm -hmm. go, oh, thank you. They're genuine python skin. And they'd go, really? And I'd go, yes, feel. I've had my thighs stroked by more CEOs than you could shake a stick at. So let me bring the journey up to date. <laughs> so today, I am no longer high-flying, highly paid advertising executive. Today I am an impoverished startup entrepreneur. I'm reinventing myself in every possible way, including financially. And so I no longer have the need to power dress in the same way that, that I did when I was running an advertising agency. However, I still regard clothes and what I wear in exactly the same way, in that it's enormously important they make me feel good, even though these days my um, you know, go-to um, fashion purchases of choice are Topshop. I often say, to women these days, it is the expression of your personal style, not the suppression of it, that actually helps you achieve what you want to at work. Too many women stifle their sense of personal style in a professional context. Actually, the thing that will always get you where you want to go is being yourself. There is an assumption that women are really happy with sex where they don't orgasm. Just imagine flipping what we're used to in our culture Imagine if every man went into every sexual encounter expecting not to come, and imagine if every woman went into every sexual encounter expecting to come. Mainstream mass market porn does both men and women a huge disservice. It does women a disservice because the majority of mainstream porn is made by men for men, and so the be all and end all of every single mainstream porn scene is to get the man off. Porn does not mm -hmm. show women how to expect demand, totally. ask for and experience their own pleasure. Porn does men a huge disservice because porn convinces men that sex is dick-centric. That it's all about how big it is, how long it is, how hard it is, how long you keep it up for. And great sex is about every part of you. Great sex is mm -hmm. about both of you exploring every part mm -hmm. of you. And great sex is born out of great communication. I would like to make real world sex just as socially shareable and discussable as anything else we currently share on Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, Instagram. My favourite quote of all time is Alan Kay, who said, in order to predict the future, you have to invent it. Too many people feel the future is something that happens without us, that rolls us over in its wake. And I'm all about, decide what you want the future to be and make it happen.